Hello everyone. Welcome to our class. My name is Kuo Chen Li. In today's sections, we will talk about performance monitoring. This is today's online. We will talk about introduction to performance monitoring, administration essentials, administration configurings, connections portings, and tracking who is logged on. Remote support is an important part of administrations. Using remote desktop for administrations, you can manage remote servers and workstations. Remote desktop for administration is a feature of Windows Server 2008 terminal services. And you can use it to connect to and manage remote systems as if you were logged on locally. And because all the applications processing is performed on the remote systems, only the data from the devices, such as the display, keyboard, and mouse, are transmitted over the network. And you can use a remote desktop for administrations to manage computers running Windows 2000 and later Windows operating systems. And remote desktop for administration essentials. And using remote desktop for administrations, and you can use a no local area network LAN, while area network WAN, or internet connections to manage computers remotely with the Windows graphical interface. Remote desktop for administrations is part of terminal services. Microsoft has separated terminal services into two operating modes. Remote desktop for administration mode, terminal server mode, both features use the same client, Remote Desktop Connections, RDC, for connecting to remote systems. Administrators can also use the remote desktop snap-ins for the Microsoft Management Consoles, MMC. And no terminal server client access license and TSCL is required to use remote desktop for administrations. And Windows Server 2008 allows two active administration sections. This change from the previous configurations allows one administrator to be logged on locally and another administrator to be logged on remotely. Or two administrators to be logged on remotely. If a third administrator tries to log on, the, the administrator will be prompt to end uh, existing sections so that he or she can log on. Although it is recommended that administrators use admin sections and you can use a virtual sections. When working with a virtual sections, you can perform most administration tasks. And your key limitation in, uh, is in your ability to interact with the console section itself. Configuring remote desktop for administrations. The two components for remote desktop for administration you will need to support and config are terminal services for the server portions and the remote desktop connections for the client portions. An alternative to using RDC is the remote desktop snapping. 
which lets you connect to and manage multiple remote desktops. Enabling remote desktop for administrations on servers enable the remote desktop for administration mode on all servers on your network is recommended. Especially for servers in remote sites that, has no, that have no local administrators. And you have two configuration options for enabling remote desktop. You can select allow connections from computers running any versions of remote desktop. Let's secure. To allow connections from any versions of Windows. Or you can select allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with network level authentications. More secure. To allow connections only from Windows Vista or Windows Server 2008 and computers with a secure network authentication. Keep the following details about using remote desktop for administration in mind. All remote connections must be established using accounts that have passwords. If a local account on the system doesn't have a password, you cannot use the account to connect to the system remotely. If your computer is running Windows Firewall, the operating system automatically creates an exception that allows remote desktop protocol, RDP, connections to be established. If you are running a different firewall on the computers, and you must open the port on the firewall to allow incoming remote desktop protocol RDP connections to be established. And by default, all members of the administrators group can log on remotely. The remote desktop users groups has been added to Windows Server 2008 Active Directory to ease managing terminal services users. Members of this group are allowed to log on remotely. Configuring remote desktop for administration through group policy. Remote desktop for administration is part of terminal services and you can use a group policy to configure terminal services. Microsoft recommends using group policy as the first choice when you are when configuring terminal services. For use, of, for use with remote desktop for administrations. The precedence hierarchy for terminal services configurations is as follows. Computer label group policy, user label group policy, local computer policy using the terminal services, configuration tools, user policy on the local user and group label, and local client setting. And you can configure local policies on individual computers or on an organizational unit in a domain. And you can use group policy to configure terminal services settings per connections, per users, per network, per computer, or for groups of computers in an OU of a domain. And supporting remote desktop connection clients. The remote desktop connection client is the terminal services client. It uses the Microsoft remote desktop protocol, RDP, 
version 6.0 or later. Clients can use a remote desktop connection client to connect to a remote servers or workstations that has been set up to be administ administered remotely. Remote desktop connection clients as later service packs are released. This service pack might include updated version of the RDC client. The features you should be aware of when supporting RDC are the following. Custom display resolutions allow high colors and full screen viewings. And monitor spanning settings allow you to display remote sessions across multiple monitors. And all monitors must be horizontally aligned and use the same resolutions. And the maximum resolution across all monitors cannot exist for 096 times 2048. And by default, data sent between the client and the servers is encrypted at the maximum key strength supported by the client. And if you are config RDT on your terminal services server to require high encryptions, a client can make a connection only if it supports 128 bits or higher encryptions. And if a connection is interrupted or lost while you are performing the task, the client software will attempt to reconnect to the sections and in the interim, processing continues on the servers so that any running processes can be finished without interruption. If for some reasons you are unable to log on remotely, after you are disconnected, your logon sections can be accessed by logging on locally. Enhanced experience settings include form smoothings and display data prioritizations. Form smoothing ensures that computer forms appear clear and smooth, provided that the desktop has clear type enabled. Display data prioritizations gives priority to, to display keyboard and mouse data over other types of data such as printing or file transfers. The default bandwidth ratio is 70 to 30. This means that the display and input data will be all allocated 70% of the bandwidth and all other traffic, such as file transfers or print jobs, will be allocated 30% of the bandwidth. Resource redirections allows audio, mapped drives, pods, printers, and certain keyboard combinations to be handled by the client computers. If an application generates old audio feedback, such as an error notifications, this can be redirected to the client. In addition, local devices, such as drives, printers, and serial ports are also available. Because both local and network drives are available on the client users can easily access local drives and transfer files between the client and the server. Plug and play device redirections extends the resource redirections features to allow locally connected and supported plug and play devi devices to be installed on and used with a remote computer. And you can now redirect media players 
that supports media transfer protocol, MTP, and digital cameras that support picture transfer protocol, PTP. Plug and play notifications will appear in the taskbar on the remote computer. As discussed previously, you now can open two administrator sections on computers that runs Windows Server 2008 without needing a TSCL. Previously, Windows 2000 terminal services required a license for each client. The use of admins or console sections greatly enhance you, your capabilities as admin administrators to successfully execute programs, applications, and processes that will not run in the virtual sections. And there are several ways to start a remote desktop connection client. Run in admin mode. Admin mode is used by administrators to enable full interactions with the console of the remote systems. Run in virtual section mode. And virtual section mode is used by administrators as well as the users to start virtual sections on a remote system. After the client is started, enable the name or internet protocol address of the computer to which you want to connect, as shown in figure. If you don't know the name of the computers, Use a drop-down list provided to choose an available computer. Or select Browse for More in a drop-down list to display a list of domains and computers in, these do in those domains. If you want to use the different account information, click Options and then enter your username in the field provided. To set the domain, select the allow me to save credential checkbox to enable automatic logon if desired. There are six tabs you can use to change the client settings. General. And you might want to use these options to save keystrokes by adding logon information. And rather than typing in your settings each time, and you can save the connection settings and load them when you want to make a connection. And display it. The default settings for RDC are full screens and high color. And you can modify this setting here. And local resources. And you can modify the way the resource and the device redirection work, including audio redirections, keystroke combination redirections, and local device and resource redirections. And by default, remote computer sound is redirected to the local computers. And using the remote computer sound options, and you can change the default settings by selecting do not play it or leave at remote computer. And by default, local printers are connected automatically when users are logged on to the remote computer. This makes it easy to print to your currently configured printers when you are working with a remote system. By default, anything you copy to the remote computer's clipboard is copied to the local computer's clipboard. 
this makes it easy to copy from a remote source and pass into a local source uh, by default. The additional options ensure that smart cards connected to a remote computers are available for use in your remote sections. And you can also connect serial ports, local disk drives, and supported plug and, plug and play devices to make them available for use. Drives and supported devices can be selected by name or you can simply select the drives and supported plug and play devices options to make all drives and devices available for use. Selecting drives allows you e to easily transfer files between the local and remote computer. And selecting supported plug and play devices allows you to work with supported devices, including media players and digital cameras and programs. And you can configure the execution of programs when the session starts from this tab. Experience. And you can select the connection speed and other network performance settings. For optimal performance, choose the connection speed you are using, such as more than 56 k bit per second or LAN. 10, 10 megabits per second or higher and allow only bitmap caching. Other options you can allow include desktop background, form smoothing, desktop compositions, show contents of windows while dragging, menu and windows animations, and things. If you select these additional checkboxes, and you cause additional processing on the remote systems and re additional network traffic, which can slow down performance. And desktop composition creates an enhanced desktop, providing that you have installed the desktop experience features on the terminal services servers and clients they are using Windows Vista. And form smoothing allows the client to pass through clear type forms, providing clear type is enabled, which is the default setting. And by default, reconnect if connection is dropped, is selected. If the section is interrupted, the RDC will try to reconnect it automatically. And getting disconnected from the connection doesn't stop processing. The section will go into a disconnected state and continue con executing whatever processes the sections was running. And advanced. You can select these options to control the use of server authentications and the terminal server gateway feature. And by default, the RDP client is configured into warn you if the authentication protocol fails and automatically detect TS gateway setting. And remote desktops allows you to connect to a number of computers running remote desktop for administrations and to switch between them within one window. To start remote desktops, click Start All Programs, Administrative Tools, Terminal Services, Remote Desktops, or type tsmmc.msc at the command prompt. And you can then establish connections to the remote systems you want to work with. 
and right-click the remote desktop node in the console root. And let's select Add New Connections in the Add New Connection dialog box. Enter the name or IP address of the computers to which you want to connect as shown in figure. And click Browse to display a list of domains and available computers in those domains. The connection name field is filled, with, filled in automatically for, your, for you based on the server name or IP address you entered. Each config connection can be selected and switched between without you having to log off each time. Following this, you, can, you could switch to a different remote system simply by clicking its entries in the left pane. To disconnect from a remote system, right-click the related entries in the left pane and select Disconnect. Disconnecting from a section does not end a section. The session will go into a disconnected state and continue executing whatever processes the, the section was running. And the proper way to end a section is to log off the remote computer, just as you would a local computer. When you connect to a remote system in remote desktops, the screen on the remote system fills the right pane, as shown in figures. Before you make a connection, you should maximize the remote desktop windows. If you don't do this, you will end up with a small screen that cannot be resized. To change this behavior or config additional options, select Properties. In the Properties dialog box showing figures, you can change the connection options using the following tab. Generals. You can set the connection options as discussed previously. And you can also use this to change the connection mode and the creden credentials associated with the logon. And screen options. And you can choose a desktop size or custom size to use for the connections. The screen size options available depends on the size of the display on your local computer. In most cases, you will want to use the default options expand to field MMC resort pane. Others, you can configure the execution of programs when the session starts. Manage authentication security and enable redirections of local drives when logged onto the remote computer. Dry redirection makes it easier to transfer files to and from the remote computer. When you deploy terminal services, you can use the terminal services manager to view and ma manage logon sections. With a remote desktop for administrations, you can use this as well but you typically don't need all the additional options and details. A more basic way to keep track of who is logged on to a server is to use the QUSER command. Type QUSERs to see who is logged on to the system on which you are running the command prompt. Or type Q users slash servers server name to see who is logged on to a remote server. 
and you can also use task manager to view user sections and you can also use task manager to manage remote user sections to disconnect a user sections select the user entries click disconnect and then click disconnect users when prompt to confirm the actions to log off your uh, users select the user entries click log off and then click log off users when prompted to confirm the actions and the differences between disconnecting the sections and logging off a section is important when you disconnect the sections the session goes into a disconnected state and continue executing current processes and if you log off a user, you end the user's sections, closing any applications the user was running, and ending any foreground processes the person was running as well. A foreground process is a process being run by an active application as, op as opposed to a background or a batch process being run independently from the user sections.